Uh, hi everyone. Uh, please indicate if you're able to hear me well. I uh, will be will be starting in a few minutes, in about three to four minutes. Um, and as you go, know, I usually prefer when the questions are asked on Slack. Right, so as, as, as we continue or as we proceed, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them on Slack and I'm going to answer them most probably at the end of the session. Or if it relates to the content that we are handling immediately, then we can handle that during the session. So we're going to give a few minutes for others to join if they can. Hello, Ryan, I see that you've joined, thanks a lot. I appreciate. So we're going to give a few minutes for others to join if they can and then we'll start. I really hope my voice is coming on well, that I'm clear. I would really appreciate if you could indicate if the voice is fine. And if everything is good, I really appreciate that. So it's few, it's one minute to nine PM GMT. I think it would start at five minutes past nine PM GMT. Just so that others can join. And before it start, I, I would just wish to say good job to everyone. Like everyone is done with the, everybody has completed the first project. Like everybody has submitted and passed, like great work, right? And uh, the progress is really, is, is really inspiring. The progress is really inspiring. Like you guys are all doing a good job. Well, um, I trust that uh, the few who are, the few who are kind of behind will catch up like as soon as they have time and as soon as they have the opportunity to right but in any case don't forget to to hit me up if you have any question if you have any worries about the program in general right or about uh, your project I think all the all the appreciate that's why we're here that's why the mentors are here so if you have anything please don't hesitate to mention or don't hesitate to let me know uh, just to say that I've seen the question uh, that this goes to Vicky perhaps I've seen your question and I'll get back to you in a few This full screen.
now it will be starting in one minute approximately. Alright, um, everyone welcome to this session. I am very excited to have you here. Uh, this session is going to be a little different from the others. It's not going to be very... Uh, to contain so much text or so many definitions, but we'll try to go through a real-life problem right, and see how we can apply the lessons that we've been learning in the, in the other, the other uh, videos or in the previous the previous weeks here this is done in preparation for your next project right so data analysis in spreadsheets case study so uh, let me start by saying that there are many spreadsheet softwares right there is um, Excel from Microsoft Microsoft Excel we have Google Sheets we have I think we have numbers for the Mac OS I'm not very familiar with that but I'm familiar with Excel and Google Sheets but we will be using Excel for this lesson. We'll be using Excel for this lesson. I think most probably because it's most commonly used. Um, I don't have a personal favorite because I think it's the same thing. But I use Sheets more on a personal note. I use Google Sheets more because I easily have access to everything like from any device that I use and no matter the operating system I work with. Right. So all the objectives of the session will be to demonstrate how data analysis is done with real life data and real life examples, right? So we'll talk about cleaning data, sorting data, filtering data, pivot tables, working with formulae. Um, these should be things that you've seen already, or if you have not yet taken the lectures on, on this, then you will surely find them this coming week. I, they're not very difficult, they're not very complicated. I think it's pretty easy. I think we'll see we'll see them or we'll see how to do all of these during this session. So um I remember we started by talking about what uh, business analysis is and then we said that it's almost the same thing as data analysis, right? And uh, I remember I was asked the question and I was like, okay, business analysis look uh, more towards the business side of things, right? Why data analysis is a little more technical. Um, I said that also based on the content of uh, the nano degree programs. For example, business analysis we do on university, we do Excel, we do SQL, and we do Tableau. I think for data analysis, uh, Python, data analysis nano degree, I think there's Python added. So business analysis is a little more focused towards uh, the technical side, but the processes are almost the same. I think uh, at one point in time depends on the kind of questions that both of them answer, right? Uh, analysis is done to answer questions. So data analysis, like what we're going to be doing is just taking raw data and creating useful information. As simple as that, that's what data analysis is taking raw data and creating useful information, information that we can use perhaps in our organization or we can use in our project or whatever. Well, a more, a more geeky definition as per Wikipedia is data analysis, the process of, of inspecting, cleansing, transforming and modeling data with the goal of discovering useful information, informing conclusions and supporting decision making. I think uh, that definition, it's kind of the same thing with the first, just that it has some keywords that we use in the field of data. The analysis is a pro process of inspecting, cleansing, uh, cleaning, transforming, putting in the right format, modeling, right, 
data with the goal of discovering useful information, informing conclusions, and supporting decision making. So um, let's just address a few words. Cleansing. Cleansing data means uh, detecting and removing or correcting corrupt or inaccurate data from the data set. Right? That's what cleansing data means. Uh, if we're working with data and then we need values and then there's one rule that is null. For example, we'll not be calculating uh, the average or well, there's one rule that is null for all columns. We'll not be calculating the average, for example, for that null value with the other values. Or if we are working and then we know that the salaries or the age groups, right? If you're working with data, we've collected data about people's ages, and then we know someone cannot be more than maybe a thousand years, right? And then we see a value like a thousand, then we know, okay, that value is inaccurate. So we can either just remove the value from the data set or maybe put it to be equal to the average of the other values. Like there are ways of dealing with there are ways of dealing with data like that. Right. So transformation means that we convert we convert data from one structure to another format or structure. Uh we'll encounter, we'll encounter this a lot. Like sometimes when you import data into your your application, let's say Microsoft or Excel or let's say Sheets. Sometimes the data doesn't come in the right format. Sometimes dates come as numbers, right? Like if you have to do some operation on the days, then you may have to structure that or to format that, right? And modeling is a process used to define and analyze data requirements used to support business decisions. So based on these business decisions who have a particular process, a process, I think a process defined as a, a system is defined as having input, right, processes, and then output. So that process, right, is what they call modeling. The input will be the data. The output one is uh, the output are the insights that we want to come up with. And then the process is kind of a big or high level view of of uh, mod uh, sorry modeling is kind of the high level view of the process. Like what would happen to data before we have these these insights, right? So. Um, over the couple over the past week over the past week you've mostly had to to see spreadsheets to handle spreadsheets uh sorry the, sorry about that the videos that you've had to watch or the lessons with spreadsheet one getting started where you got introduced to spreadsheets uh i think the uh, the lectures talked of rows columns cells and define what you each and every one of those where we'll do that again soon and then you saw what an absolute and a relative address is, is for each cell and then the next lesson was spreadsheet 2 where we handled manipulating data right and the uh, functions were introduced and then uh, many more functions or many more ways of working with text data we introduced like uh, finding maybe a particular character in some text data finding the everything from the left of a text maybe to the fifth character and then also you did sort sorting and filtering and then proceeded with spreadsheets three which is to analyze data which was analyzing data uh, where you saw aggregates and logical function, right? Pivot, ta pivot tables, name ranges, and lookup functions. So we're going to do almost all of these, right? I think the other thing that is not included is name ranges and lookup functions. And they're not really difficult. They're not really difficult. In, they're not really difficult. Well, if we have time at the end, then we may, we may touch some of them too. So, um, a case study starts here, right? So last week I saw some information from uh, the university uh, university student Slack channel. Right? There's someone that shared this data, and I decided to to use it for this task. So um, this is what the data looks like. So I've downloaded the data already. This is the data open in sheets. So I've downloaded the data already. This is it in Excel. 
So this is the data in Excel. So I'm using Excel 2016, right? So um, the first task or the first thing to do when you're giving data to analyze is, well, generally what I do is that I just inspect the data. Right? I just look at it and see if it makes sense. So um, I'm seeing that, for example, I'm not going to need these first two rows. So I might as well delete them right, before start working. Or we could just make a copy of the data and then work on another one. Okay. So notice what I just did, right? Um, in Excel, and I think in Sheets, each sheet can have a couple of tabs with different data, right? So you can add as many tabs as you need by clicking here. See, a new sheet has appeared. Maybe sheet five, it is blank. Sheet five, sheet six. And here, all, all these sheets are found in the same Excel file. So this is what we just copied. Let me delete these ones, the ones that I just created. Okay, so um, as we were saying, uh, spreadsheets are organized into rows and columns, right? Spreadsheets are organized into rows and columns. So this is, these are columns. The columns are given uh, letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D to Z. I think after that, if you have more data, you have A, 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 B, A, C, A, D to Z, Z, and then you can have A, 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 or something like that, but there's a limit to how much data each spread, each spreadsheet can can have, and then you you see you hear more about that and you see more about that when you do databases. I think that's all the reasons, or well, that's all the advantages of databases over spreadsheets. So um, each cell, or where a column and a row meet, is called a cell, right? So here we have row, sorry, column A, and here we have row four. Right, so this is the cell A4. If you check here, you'll see the reference or the location where we are, A4, right? So as I said, uh, this data doesn't seem to be too relevant to me. So I'm going to start by deleting this first two rows. Good. Start by deleting the first two rows. Mm, I don't quite see what is written here. Like this is the header. I like when my header has a different color. I like when my header is colored differently. So mm, let's do something like this. Good. And then here you see that I can't really see what is written here. It's not very legible. This surely should be something like country of, rigid, of residence. So I'm just going to select all of these and wrap text. Good. So now I think I see most, I can see all the head as well. My experience level is category, job title, startup size, phone, phone raised to date, uh, total yearly compensation, country, country of the company I work for, country of residence, city. Okay. So I think all of, I think everything is fine. Uh, I don't think we're going to need this column. Personally, I don't think we're going to need this column. So we may as well delete it, like if we want, right? If we want, we may as well delete this. All right. So, Mm, as I said, I just go through the data. I see what is lacking. Like here, I noticed already that some some values are lacking here, right? Some values are lacking here. Depending on what I'm trying to find out, I'm going to, or depending on the columns that will be useful to me, or depending on the questions that one will be trying to answer with the data, we're going to select what columns to use and what to include, what to remove. 
because if we're working, for example, if this column of funds to raise is not important to us, then we may work with every cell available. But if this column, for example, is important, then we may want to delete or to remove all the blank or all the rules that have a blank for these funds to raise column from our data set. Right, so you may want to do that. So one easy way or a quick way of doing these, like uh, for our example, I think the country is going to important to be important country for the country of the company I work for. Sorry. So one easy way of doing that usually is just sorting. So I click on the column. I want to sort. Then I sort from A to Z. And that will mean sort uh, from the lowest to the highest. So now everything here has been sorted, right? So here is AU, starts with A, so it means Australia or something. I'm sure that means Australia or something. So you'd see that after this point, after this point, all the, all the rules that have a blank for the country are down, right? So they're below this point, which shows that I could just copy my data from I could just copy this range and work just with this range. Let's try that. Just put uh, useful data. Hmm. Useful data category job title. Let me see. Hotel, this is too small. Expand this a bit. This one too. This one too. This one too. This one. It's a Boolean value. This one, and then the last. All right, great. So I think everything is uh, legible. Everything is legible, so we can continue, right? So again, depending on the columns that will be of interest to you, you could remove the blanks, right? You could remove the row that has blanks for some of the columns like this funds to raise column also. And also, we want to clean the data. I think having 20 to 50 employees is not very relevant, right? The information is not very clear. One way of working with this kind of data is simply to just look for maybe the average of what is passed here, right? To look for the average of what is passed here. And uh, let me see, there's another thing that we're going to, there's another column by which we had to sort. Okay, so we've already seen how we sort, right? Like what we did was just a trick to remove the data that we don't, or the data that we, we will need. Right, it was a trick to remove the data that we need and separate it from the ones that we don't need. So, depending on the particular column that you're going to be working with, you could do the same thing here. Right, you could do the same thing here and then remove everything where it's unsure or something. And then I was saying that for this one, you could actually search the startup size is 20 to 60 employees. This does not really help us. Like, you could actually search for employees here then replace all of that by blank space so that it's 
so this is like a way of cleaning the data, right? And the reason, all right, so this is another thing. So you see that we've tried to remove employees and then we've tried to clean the data, but now here we have 20 to 50 and here we have 25th November, right? Here we have 20 to 65 and here we have 25th November again. That is because um, the data type of this column has not been defined. The data type has, of this column has not been defined. So I read some of the values as uh, numbers. Like here you see the data type here general and then this one surely be date custom. I'm sure that it gave, uh, Excel tried to give it the most suitable, the most appropriate value. So if we go back, this should, this should surely be 25 to 11 to 25. So this 11 to 25, after we've removed employees, <laughs> Excel understands this like uh, 25th of November. So I think that is that is it about filtering, that's it about, uh, sorry, sorting data. That is it about sorting data. We could actually sort data by two combined, by multiple categories. Again, we could sort it by country, right? Expand the selection. That's because I chose to sort only by this column. But since I want the sort to affect all other columns, like click on expand the selection, and then you do sort. So the most important sort should be handled last. Let's try, for example, to sort by salary so that we make sure that there is no blank salary. So we can now sort by salary. So here, notice that it is already sorted by a country like AU, then BE, BR. We can now sort this by salary from the lowest to the smallest. So actually two sorts applied here, right? So it sorts by salary and then at the same time by uh, country. This is uh, kind of tricky and difficult to see, but two sorts are actually applied here. Two sorts are actually applied here. Uh, a way of doing that or another way of doing that, let me see going to sort and then the first uh, the first column you want to sort by, for example, what we did here, the first thing we sorted by was country of the company I work for. So values A to Z and put OK, right? So this gives us back this table that we had. And then you come back and then you click again on sort. You already have, you're already sorting by the country. So you can now sort by something else, right? You can sort by the next thing was what salary. Mm. Where is this salary? Base salary, so value, smallest to largest. All right. All right, so what happened here actually it's almost the same thing that happened, but here the major sort is the sort by country, right? The major sort is the sort by country, and then um, in the country, it's sorted by salary, I think. You see, sort, basis, salary, basis, salary. No, it was total yearly compensation. Sorry, not down. Total yearly compensation, good. So here, all right, I think this is clearer. So here, the major sort is the country, right? And then the minor one is the total yearly compensation. That is why you see that here we have Australia to the end, or AU, and then within the AU group, it is sorted, right, from smallest to largest. So what we did at first was to put the major sort to be the total yearly compensation, and you can do that simply by, I think you can just carry this field. Let's see, there should be a way of carrying this field. <laughs> Same as the friend here. All 
Okay, I thought there was a way of... Okay, I think this is it. All right, good. So I think that is it. The first sort now, the major sort now is the total yearly compensation, and then the minor one will be the country of the company. So if you click, it gives us what we had at first, right? But I think this one is better. I think this one is better. So uh, I think that's it about sort, right? So you can sort by multiple. You can you can sort by um, using multiple columns. Okay, you can sort using multiple columns or using different features of the data, right? So um, while sorting, sorting would help us answer a few questions like, okay, who had the, or what is the highest salary in Australia, right? So it's easy to pick that up from here. The highest salary in Australia is 110,000, the highest yearly compensation, sorry. In Australia, it's $110,000, right? So sorting helps us answer such questions. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is filtering, right? So filtering helps us to, to have a subset of our data or a subset of data that is relevant to us. Example, uh, an example question that one may ask is, okay, how much do experienced people make in total? Right, how much do experienced people make in total? What is the total yearly compensation for experienced people? Given that we've sorted, then there should be no... All right, so let's expand this. Okay, given that we've sorted, we see that there is one bar that lacks... Or one row, sorry, one row that lacks value, value for total yearly compensation. As I scroll, it's clear that the header also goes. So one of the things that uh, sometimes I like doing here is freezing or freezing this cell. I think we go to view, normally there should be view, all right, and then there is a freeze. So we're here, freeze paints, and then we can freeze the top row. I can freeze the top row so much so that as I scroll, it doesn't change. Okay, so this is what we were doing. We're trying to find the total yearly compensation for experienced people, right? Or for people who are experienced. So here you see again, look at the discrepancy in the data. So here everybody here is putting um, maybe 250,000. I think most the data is mostly correct, but notice what happened in the last value. Right? Notice what happened here. Fifteen dollars an hour. So imagine that um, this wasn't checked, for example, and then we're calculating maybe the average, or we're calculating either the average or even the total as we're planning to calculate. You see how this will disturb already, right? So we may have to reformat this data. Okay, so um, I think there's something here about the number of hours. So one thing that we may want to do is we may want to take the number of hours a week. Right, the weekly load here is 25 to 40. We may want to take the average of these and then multiply it uh, by the number of weeks in the year and then multiply it by these or we could just simply remove this data <laughs> or remove this column. We could just simply remove this column. I think I'll prefer to go with the other solution to make things easy. Oh, delete, delete. All right, so I think that should be it. And also, you notice that the data has both euros and dollars, right? The data is in both euros and dollars. Oh, one of the things that one may want to do here is convert every euro maybe to a dollar. Let's see. Mm. Mm. 
we can use an if condition here, for example, and say that, okay, if the value starts with uh, maybe the, power, the the euro sign, then either we exclude it from the data although, or we convert it to to the corresponding or to one single unit to make the data uniform. Oh, we have another $40 in R here. Forty dollars an R. So let's see. So here, let's search for slash R. Find next. I think it's the only one that we have. It's the only one that we have. So we can proceed to delete this one too. And deleting the data actually is, is not the best solution, right? Deleting the data is not the best solution in some of these cases because you're losing data points. Uh, you're losing data points as much as possible. If you can transform it, then fine. If you can transform it, then fine. So here, I think this understands that it is currency. I think here, Excel will understand that it is currency. We'll go to home, understands that it is currency. This is the data type here. In the, I saw a double dollar somewhere here. Understands that it is currency. Um, for purposes of simplicity, I don't want to put it the same. Nope. For purposes of simplicity, let's assume that it's the same currency, right? For purposes of simplicity, let's assume that it's the same currency. Let's assume that is the same currency all true. Right, I think we have cleared everything that has per R or per D. D. Okay. For purposes of simplicity, let's assume that is the same currency so we're trying to we're trying to see how much experience people earn in total right so to do that we'd have to include a filter to do that we have to include a filter this is easily done here right you click on filter and then you see this small arrow that appears at the uh, at the top or at each header of a column thing is just to see what we can filter by, right? It, the different categories or the different sets of values that this column has, right? So here you see, for example, that it's everything is checked, select all. So the different sets of values that this column can have or the various sets of values that this column has, advanced, beginner, ex experience, intermediate, junior, and master. So. Let's see, how much do junior people make in general? Or what is the total yearly compensation for every junior person who responded to maybe this survey, right? So want to remove everything and then leave only junior. Right, so you see that we are filtered by junior, right? We're filtered by experience junior. So, um. The junior people, the various categories, uh, maybe developers, um, or the various uh, domains of work that are working is developers, marketing and sales, support, creative, and developer. I wonder why the developers are different. <laughs> general, general. Oh, it's different people, yeah. Developer and developer. So um, sometimes we can also filter, sorry, we could also filter by, we could also apply a filter twice, or we could also apply two or more filters. Right here, we are filtered already by level of experience. So now we could also filter by category. So let's see how much developers make in total for those that, uh, for those that took the survey, how much uh, developers make in total. So here, if you choose developer here and click on OK, so you see that the the data has 
been even more filtered, right? Only the few people that had category developer are present here. Sometimes you would have to to carry out operations on the on the data that you filtered, right? Usually, um, if that is the data that I would need for the rest of maybe my analysis, I will just copy it to a new sheet. Usually, that's what I'll do. But other times, you don't have to do that. And a common mistake that people usually do at times, I think I, do, I, fell, I fell into this trap a lot. Right? I fell in this trap when I just started with Excel. Is If they ask, for example, for the sum, again, let's assume that this compensation is in US dollars, like this uh, euro, let's assume that it's in, euro, it's in dollars. So if they ask for the sum that the sum of the total yearly compensation for every junior person put equal to sum. Click that for autocomplete and then select the range. So this usually is a big mistake that people fall into. All right, this usually is a big mistake that people fall into. You notice that the sum that we have is not equal to this. Right, the sum that we have had is not equal to the sum of these individual numbers. If we add 135,000, 125,000, and 63,000, it is not going to give us 10,575,955. Okay, so uh, avoid falling into this trap. Avoid falling into this trap. The reason it gives that value is because it includes, like, if you see the range here is from F. 66 to so f196 uh, it is taken from here from the 66th row to the 198th row and everything in between so it's not just calculating this it's calculating everything in between right one of the ways to do or to correct this is to write sum and then you choose the individual values by pressing control or command like you see how it adds the values individually. And this should be the sum. Or an easier way of performing operations on filtered data is to use uh, is to use subtotal. Right, so if we call to subtotal, subtotal. That. So when you put the subtotal, now you choose the uh, the function that you want. Like, is it the average of the subtotal that you've had? Is it the count of the subtotal, like the subtotal of all of the data, right? Is it the count of uh, the result of the filtering? Is it the sum? I think we want the sum, then we go with nine. And then we can choose the range. You notice, that we have the correct value for the answer. So be very careful not to fall into this kind of trap. Be careful not to fall into this kind of trap. So again, filtering helps us to reduce or, or to reduce or to focus, to laser focus our analysis on what is needed, right? Uh, if we have, if we were asked the question, how much the junior or the people with the junior level of experience make in general or developers with junior with junior level of experience making total for those who took the, sum, the survey would have to apply a filter on the level of experience and then would have to uh, apply a filter on the category still right and then before we can apply the subtotal we can apply the subtotal to the result of our filtering so after this you could just remove the filters by Again, clicking on clear. So when you clear, everything is gone, right? We have the data the way we had at first. Okay. So um, cleared, but something happened here. The formula. All right. We're good to go. So uh, the next concept or the next thing that uh, was handled was pivot tables, All right? Pivot tables. Pivot tables are very essential and very useful feature in spreadsheets. So pivot tables again are not difficult, like not at all. 
pivot tables are not difficult. Pivot table, what is a pivot table? It's simply a feature that can easily make calculation based on one or more criteria. A feature that can easily make calculations, we remove the filter altogether. A feature that can easily, or enables us to easily make calculations based on one or more criteria. So it's very easy to work with. Um, let's see an example. So let's try to insert a pivot table. So mm, let's see how much. Let's see how much each raise. I think we have the raise data here. It's raise, raise, raise. Okay, let's raise. Raise some data has not been provided. Data has not been provided. Some data has not been provided for the race. So ideally, we want to sort and then we remove the data that is not available. But nonetheless, um, let's assume, right, that everything is fine and then work like this. Let's assume that everything is fine. Actually, that's not a good thing to do, right? Ideally, we'd have to remove the blank values such that uh, the, our values that we have, the values that we have are accurate. But anyhow, the pivot table will have a section for blank, right? The pivot table will have a section for blank. So um, let's include a pivot table. So to do that, you just click on pivot table. Pivot table will ask you to select uh, a table or a range. I think this is a whole data set. And then you want the results. You can either place it here on a new worksheet. Let's take a new worksheet. And OK. Right, so this is what the pivot table, like when you do it, this is what will appear, right? And you should look at the right corner. You should look at the right corner, or the right end of your screen. And then here you'd see everything, or you'd see what you would work with, right? Or what will enable you to build a good pivot table. So we were trying to see how much uh, each race earns, right? how much each race earns. So, mm, the salary, put it in values. Then where is the race? Good. So here, you see that we've included raised. Let me start back again, or let me restart it. Let me start it all over. So to delete something from the pivot table, you just carry it and put it in the empty space. I think it goes, right? So let's do this again. So now we're trying to see how much each raise earns, right? So we tr start by dragging this raise. So try to picture the data. If you want to see how much each raise earns, uh, we can either have races on the rows, right? We have races on the columns. So it depends on how we really want to see on how we want to picture this. So now I'm picturing races on the rows and then the, 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 the salary on each of the columns or on the columns. So I put the race, I drag the race from here. These ones are all the headers that were in a data set. Right, so I drag the race from there. So the race appear here. Right, there's the value for blank. And then I drag the base salary to the values. So the values uh so the value section here. Right. And notice the values that we have as results. We have 15, 8, 2, um, nothing here. One for Hispanic. Native Hawaiian, white, the one for white, I don't know why it's different. And then nine for blank. So uh, this cannot be the sum of the salaries. This is surely the count, like you see the count of the base salary. So he has counted maybe 15 people who are Asian. He has counted eight people who are black. And he has counted two people 
or a Hispanic, I think that is what it shows here. So to change that, you just have to right click here, go to summarize values by, and then uh, the function that you want, either to sum, to aggregate, to count, maximum. All right, so you can choose sum, and then you'll see the sum of the salaries of the Asians, or the sum of the base salaries of the black or African Americans. All right, so basically that is how Basically, that's how pivot tables, pivot tables work. And then you could now uh, include a filter. Let's say I want to filter by, by gender. All right, you could now include a filter here. So here, all the genders are included. So you could, if you wanted maybe just the salaries, the total salaries of uh, the female of each race, you could just click uh, female here and it'll give you that result if you wanted that for the male this is what it gives you wanted that for the non-binary let's remove male that's what it gives so you see that pivot tables actually help to do or they help us to to work to calculate some particular values based on um, a particular column, like it helps us to work really, really, really fast. Like feature that helps us to easily make calculations based on more one or more criteria. So depending on the criteria that uh, we are studying or we are trying to investigate, uh, pivot tables really help us to work fast. All right, pivot tables help us to work fast. So uh, a good question that we may ask again. A good question that we may ask is uh, salary by experience or the total salary by experience, right? Total salary by experience, experience level. So again, I'm already picturing the data. I want to see experience levels. So let me delete this. I want to see experience levels of the rows and I want to see the sum and the average of the salaries on the columns, right? So the first thing that I want to do is come and uh, select the category on the rules. No, it's not the category, it's level of experience, sorry. Level of experience on the rules. So you see advanced, beginner, experience, uh, intermediate, junior, master. I want to, uh, how do the years of experience vary with the level of experience? No, this is count of base salary. Sorry, I wanted the level of years of experience. So here it's taking the count of the years of experience, right? So again, we don't want count. Let's just do this five times. Nope, not experience. Sorry again. Years of experience. So three three times. So the first one I want to see um, the average, right? I think uh, what would be valuable for us, summarize values by average. Average years of experience for an advanced person is maybe 8.5 years. Average level of experience for a beginner is two years. Average level of, of uh, experience for an experienced person is 10. Intermediate is five. Junior is seven and advanced is 14. So here you'll see, for example, the median. Summarize values by max average. That's a minimum max. What data is available? What other data is available? Maximum level of experience for each level. So the maximum level of experience for a master from those who answered or who responded to the survey, right, is 30. It's always important to to have things or to define to define what you're doing well. Like if you notice, I I I don't want to say for everybody who is working remotely. I always say, okay, the average the average level of experience or the average years of experience for those who answered the survey, right? 
I think it takes us back to all the lesson on um, population and sample. The population is everybody that we want to measure. Like if we had data for all remote workers all over the world, then we could say that. But here is only a sample. There's only a few people who answered this. So the maximum number of years of experience is that. Right. So most of the times you can have, uh, I think, all our summary functions here. And then the total number of experience is that. Now we could change our headers. This is average. Years of, this is max years of, sum of years of, wow. So basically, um, that is how pivot tables work, right? You may want to change the levels. This grand total is just the sum of all of this. Just this, let's see. Oh, is the average of all of this. This grand total depends on uh, the function that you've used. I think this is the average of all of these. This one is the max of all of these values. And this one is the sum of all of these values. Oh, and one interesting thing that you could do with uh, pivot tables is actually to insert a slicer. A slicer helps to view the data dynamically. Let's see what we mean. So if we insert a slicer, for example, for Nomad, did you move or did you not move? Right? Insert a slicer for Nomad. So these are all the answers that we provided in the, in the Nomad column. Right, so if you click on here, at, at this time everything is selected, even though the slicer is not applicable on this yet, right? So if you choose, are you a nomad? If you choose no, you see that the data changes, or the, or the data changes depending on what is selected on the slicer. If you choose, for example, yes, oh, let's press shift, let's choose yes. Good. So the average years of experience for advanced people who moved is this, right? So you see how uh, pivot tables can be very powerful tools in analyzing data using Excel. Like it really, it really helps perform some complex calculations really fast, right? Imagine that we had to use formulas or formula to do all of that. It will take quite some time. Um, and uh, I think the final thing that would we'll look for today would be working with formulae. Working with formula. Um, for that, we're going to use some structured data, some data that is actually clean already, just so that I, so, so that I demonstrate that fast. So here we have some data with... Uh, <laughs> ID, employee, department, and ours worked last year. So yeah, I just want to demonstrate an example of using formula in Excel, right? I'll just demonstrate maybe the, the sum if. And then the other ones are almost the same. So uh, I took this file, the references in the, the references on the slides, right? I took the file from some other video that I watched some time ago. And it actually helps. It actually helps a lot. It actually helps a lot because the data is already structured and it's easy to demonstrate what I want to demonstrate. So here, uh, let's say that we want to calculate the sum of or the total number of hours worked by people in the accounting department. Right? The total number of hours worked by people in the accounting department. So um, in Excel, want to do on sum if, want to do a sum if. So sum adds all the numbers in the range of cell. Add cell specified by a given condition or criteria. Add cell specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. All right. So uh, the difference between sum if and sum ifs is the number of criteria that you specify, right? This number of criteria that you specify here, we could maybe look for, if we wanted to look for, if we were using some ifs, we'll look for maybe uh, the total number of hours work 
by people in the accounting department who's, who have maybe uh, Janae as a name, right? We have Janae as a name. But I think we'll go with some Eve. Let's press tab. Some Eve. Uh, this is a cool feature in Excel and, it, uh, and in most other spreadsheet applications. I think the functions come with how they're used. Here they're asking for range. So there's the range of what we want to sum. The shortcut would Let's see range range which of the ranges is this? All right. So this is the range. I think this is the range of the criteria. I think this is the range of the criteria. So it's here rather. So shift, control shifts and down to select everything. That's the range and our criteria is oh about these. All right, let me just make the mistake intentionally and then we'll correct it. That's the range. Our criteria is this. And then the sum range is this. Good. So the total number of people of us work by people in the accounting department is twenty six thousand four hundred and thirty three hours, right? And uh, in spread in in Excel and other spreadsheet applications, like sometimes what we want to do is just to pull this down such that it applies the formula to all the other cells that we have, right? So applying this, we see some if we're looking at this range. Take a look at what happened. Since I pulled this formula down, notice that the first cell here is not included. Neither is this one. So it sums from C6 to C65, which is out of range, right? And then it sums this value and it checks if the department is equal to this one, F6, operations. So I think this is where the idea of relative and absolute addressing comes in place. Like the address here was relatively put, right? And that is why when we try to apply the formula downwards, or when we try to apply the formula to other cells here, this happens. This was a relative address. So what we want to do is to make this address the address of the range and absolute address. Sorry about that. I think we do that by pressing F4 before the C. Is it a dollar sign or something? Dollar sign before the C. Sorry. Dollar sign before the number. Dollar sign before the cell column. Dollar sign before the number. I think that does the job. And then here too. I want to do the same thing here, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, sign. All right, so now if I pull these down, they're totally the same values, but notice that clicking on this, uh, the range, right? The range, the range is now correct, right? It's basically the same values, but the range is now correct. So um, I think we've I think we've handled majority of uh, or the bulk of the the bulk. We've handled a considerable considerable amount of the work that was done um, last week, right? And applying it to real data. And applying it to real data. So we have seen uh, we've seen how to to clean data. We've not gone really in depth on doing that, but we saw some techniques on on cleaning data. Like we may either remove we may either remove uh, uh, 
good. So we may either remove the details as lacking, right? Um, let me see. So how how data must be set up? So this is how one data to be set up, right? Before we can work in Excel. So we want to have field names in the column in the first row. I think I showed you how to freeze the data of the headers, right, of the column headers, so much that as you scroll, as you scroll, you still see what data you're working with. I uh, want to have records in rows. We don't want to have uh, blanks in column headers. Right? I don't want to have blank columns or rows in the data set. When we have that, we should just delete because they might affect our calculations. And then um, it's not advisable to have data next to the data set. So when we, what we want to have is something like this. This is the data and then all around the data we have spaces, right? We may have an empty space all around the data. You don't want to have maybe this one here, right? Because it may affect what you're working with. So we also, so we also saw how to sort, how to sort by one column, how to sort by um, many more or sort by two or more levels right and then after that we went to filtering auto filter data such that we get uh, what we need and then we filtered by one column or by one feature of the data and then we filtered by two right and then we went through how to perform operations on results of filters using the subtotal function and after that we handled pivot tables pivot tables and uh, formulas, how to work with formulas in Excel. So um, I think uh, with the with what you've learned, like you're ready to you're ready to handle various analysis tasks. Like you're already ready to get some data and get your hands dirty. Like the skills will go a long way to to help you on your next project, analyzing New York Stock Exchange data. And uh, we've come with that. We've come to the end of this session. I think it's time already. So if there are any questions, I haven't seen any questions on the Slack channel. I've not seen any questions on the Slack channel, so I'm going to leave some time again, like a few minutes. If any other, if anyone has a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Like even if you're watching later and you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. I'd be very glad to do a demo video by illustrating a, a specific tool, how to do a specific task, how to perform a specific task, and send it to you. So that said, thanks for your attention, guys. Thank you very much. I would really appreciate if I could have a if I could have feedback on this so that I make the other videos better. I hope my sound was clear and then everything is good. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. It's a lot. See you next time.